Good morning. So this is another episode of BSVP on site. And we don't have a guest this morning, but we do have a very informational tutorial. And so what I'd like to do is take you through the process of developing your Chamber of Commerce profile. Most people, if you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce, you have a profile, but have you actually taking the time to actually fill it out. So we can take you through this and I've got my PowerPoint or Keynote because I'm on a Mac set up and um, we're gonna show you that. So the importance of having your profile filled out is that your Chamber of Commerce, if they're .com or .org, will actually show up in search results. So you've got your website, and you've got your LinkedIn profile and your Facebook page. But sometimes your Chamber of Commerce link will actually show up higher in search, either for a branded search, which means someone searching for your company, or a non-branded search, which is someone Googling something or searching for your products or services. So they're not actually, they don't know who you are yet, but they do, Need your service, and so they go. They go to Google and they type in, in our case, video production. So where do you show up when, when someone types that? So what we're going to do is we're going to take you through how to actually fill in your entire LinkedIn or your entire Chamber of Commerce profile from start to end. So here we go with the image. Okay, so first of all, here we go. So this is your welcome page. Your Chamber of Commerce has set this up to welcome new members. And this is actually after you've logged in to your Chamber of Commerce account. And you'll notice here there are different categories. You can add uh, shortcuts here uh, to your personal information, your company information, hot deals, and we'll talk about that as well, member to member deals, which are basically internal between you and other map chamber members. News releases, are you coming up with, uh, have you made the news? Are you promoting something coming up? Job postings. Especially now, if you have a job posting, you're offering positions to someone, this is a perfect time to be posting in your Chamber of Commerce profile. So next, <clears throat> here are some examples of profiles that really haven't been taken too much advantage of, of what you can do. This one on top is just a, uh, a single line of who they are, they're about, or in their in, in address. This one here actually added some highlights of who they are, and these highlights are actually clickable, and we'll get into that a little bit later. And then this one here, which basically posted a, their hours in a single image. You can do so much more. So, and this is what it looks like after you're about, you've gotten set up. Your organization information, we're gonna take you through that. Your website information, your map, so people can actually find you, and your photos and logos and even videos, and if your chamber offers that. So I'm going to take me off screen for a little bit and take so you can pay attention directly to the images. So here we go. So this is what your profile can look like when you're all done. It has their thereabouts your highlights, your media, your reps, if you have more than one rep, 
you can actually add reps to your list so they get notified when things are happening within the chamber, map your location and reviews. And along the side here is your contact information. And all this is customizable and you fill them out yourself. And then along the bottom here are categories, which also help add to your SEO and search, for especially for non-branded search. So we start off with the account information. This can be provided to your Chamber of Commerce and they fill it in. If you're a member of more than one Chamber of Commerce, you may need to have more than one user ID, which is unique to each chamber. And then of course, you can always change your password and it's always recommended to change your password on a somewhat regular basis so that in case someone decides to get into your account, if it's changed on a regular basis, then you can keep them out. Although I've never had that issue, especially with the Chamber of Commerce profile. And again, contact information. This is provided to you by your or to your Chamber of Commerce when you sign up and to become a member. And most likely they're going to fill this out themselves when you become a member, but you can actually adjust this and add additional information. Do you have a second phone number to be contacted by? Uh, do you have a toll-free number you want to uh, add to your profile? A fax number, uh, if you still have faxes, and if your fax is set up where they need to call you first before they send you the fax. And of course, your email. And this can be this is the email that they reach out and send you information on a regular basis whenever the Chamber of Commerce has something to send out. And of course, your cell phone number. Your website, you'll notice below the website it says verify URL. This is to make sure that you've typed it in correctly and that it's a valid link. And this occurs uh, multiple times throughout the profile. And again, address information. This is basic information. If you've got a physical address, a storefront, you would in include that. If you have a home-based business that you don't want to promote, <clears throat> you can just include a city and a state. And then again, here you notice on the bottom here it says use this contact information on your profile member web page. So you'll see that, and that way you don't have to actually keep on typing this information in over and over again. And then a mailing address. This can be the exact same as your physical address, or again, it can be a secondary address. Additional information you can include is when you first started your business. This is some information that some chambers like to have, saying our oldest member or is has been member since 1980 and uh, they started their business in 1975 or so on and again for, uh, the number of employees you have the number of part-time employees you have this is also used by your chamber of commerce to kind of to gauge the size of your business and of course your billing contact they need to send whenever they send out an invoice for a event that they have or a renewals they can either bill you directly or in, you'll later see, see in the, uh, at the end of the program, <clears throat> the, they can actually add a credit card number and you can bill them directly. And again, once you enter the information, be sure to save it or else it won't actually sit, stay and you have to come back and, and edit it again. So again, uh, your employees, you don't have to, if you're a company with 100 employees, you don't have to actually enter every single one of them. What you want to enter here is your reps, the people who will be attending the chamber events, the lunches, the after hours, the meetings. And you can, you can, it can be yourself, it can be a sales rep, and, or it could be both. You can add a number of employees who you, who normally appear at these programs. And again, add their email address so that they're on the contact list whenever the chamber has something to send out. And web page content. You'll see how this is already filled out. 
because I checked the box up here, which says use your organization information. Again, this saves you the time of actually having to type it in again, uh, avoiding misspellings, typos, and things like that. So by just clicking the or, use the organization information, then it fills it out. And you can see it's all grayed out, so I can't change it. If I unclick this button, then I can then make some edits to it. And you can also include your website URL as a text. And then so when someone clicks on it, they, they get the full address, which is the HTTP www.yourwebsite.com. But you can make it look cleaner. You can actually just have the your name of the company.com and it's still clickable. And again, your, your email address, which can either be your personal email address or your general company email address, info at your company.com. We use contact at bsvp.com and so on. And again, you'll see this verify URL to make sure that it's a valid link and there's no typos. Social networks. Are you, a member, are you on Twitter? Are you on LinkedIn? Are you on Facebook? Enter that information here. If your company is on LinkedIn, you can use that URL as well. You don't have to use your personal LinkedIn profile. And again, you see this verify URL. Make sure that you type it incorrectly. Of course, you can always go to the actual website and copy and paste it. And again, make sure that you copy and paste it correctly. Website description, text, and content. This is the meat of how you can optimize your SEO using your Chamber of Commerce profile. You'll see here there are actually two different categories where you can enter text. There's just display on the about section, and there is a summary description that displays beneath your name in a public directory. <clears throat> so on your about page, you have the information about who you are, what you do, and you're limited to, I think here, it looks like maybe 1,500 characters. You can fill it out completely. You can go wild with information, but keep it branded and keep it keyword searchable. So you don't want to just enter information that has nothing to do with your company. If you don't do chiropractic search, uh, services, don't mention chiropractic services. So this is what appears in the chamber page of your profile. And then when you search on Google, you'll notice that when this, your chamber profile shows up, there's the link, but there's also a short description below that link. And this is where you can actually enter keywords that help Google know who you are, what you do, and why that link is, is relevant to that search. So if type, someone typed in video production services in Libertyville, Illinois, our website would come up, but also our Chamber of Commerce profile could call, come up as well. And, and so you just really get, get creative. Spend some time on this. You can also update it if you come up with better ideas or you want to add information to it as well. And again, adding your hours of operation is important. Some people know when you're open, especially now. Are you open for carry out only? Are you open for delivery? Or are you open virtually? And then driving directions if you have a physical location. And highlights. This is another area where you can get creative. Here you see I entered my website, but instead of just typing under bullet point website, I typed in video production and editing, which is a keyword searchable content. So if people are, are not searching for Blue Sky Video Productions specifically, but are searching for video production and editing either on Google or even in the Chamber of Commerce search algorithm. So when you go into your Chamber of Commerce website and do a search, you can, instead of going through the directory 
and then going through the categories and trying to find a specific service, you can type in a general term, dentist, restaurant, so something like that. And then <clears throat> if you just have a website up there, the word website won't really be, no one's really going to be searching for the word website, but it links to your website. And you're allowed up to five highlights. So again, here's another one, YouTube content marketing strategy. This is a link to my YouTube channel. And, and here's video to DVD or digital transfer. This is a link to a specific page on my website where we show we provide additional information on how to transfer your old tapes and DVDs to a digital format to watch on your television or your computer. And additional bullet points is follow us on Twitter, which is my Twitter handle, and like us on Facebook, which is my Facebook handle profile. And again, you'll notice where it says verify URL, make sure that it is a valid link and that you haven't typed in something accidentally or added an additional character that would not take them to a valid link. And again, having the HTTP in there is required. So it wouldn't just be www, it would be the entire HTTP portion. And I think that in some cases, it will add it automatically. So if you type in HTTP www.twitter.com slash BSVPTV, it may actually add an additional HTTP. So you may want to check to make that, that it doesn't do that. And again, click on the verify URL. And keywords. We talked about keywords before, non-branded searches. This is where your keywords come in. And there are tools like Google Keyword Search Tool where you can actually plug in your, the common keywords that are used to search for you, but Google can give you a lot more information based on what other people are actually searching. And you'll see the words, enter unlimited keywords with spaces in between each word. You can also group keywords together by using the quotation marks. When say, they saw, say unlimited, um, if someone wants to test that, uh, definitely DM me or, or send me a message uh, telling me how, ma how many characters you're able to s put in there. But again, keep it branded, keep it relevant. Again, you don't want to put in chiropractic or dentist, uh, tree trimmers, if those service, if you don't offer those services. And again, remember, save the changes. And actually, even better idea would be type out all of your keywords on a Word a document or a text document, and then copy and paste them into here. Because that way you can double check for spelling and everything like that as well. And categories. If you notice right in the very beginning, it's very on the bottom of my profile, it had a number of different categories listed. Those again, are searchable and you are offered one primary category but you can also choose from a number of additional categories that you may fall into so here we have business marketing internet marketing internet consultant and these are predetermined categories that are listed in your chamber of commerce directory and again, more marketing, more media, multimedia. And we chose to go with the primary category of video production and post-production. But here is a sample, in a, very, in a very small sample of what's available. So as you go through your available categories, and this is under, uh, you notice there where it says categories, is and then once you find a category that matches what you do or who you are, you just uh, click the little down arrow and check that off. And then keep going, you do additional searches, do, do additional scans, and check off the ones that are relevant to you. And additional information. You can also offer who you referred to 
referred by to the chamber. This is inf internal information that they can use to discover what marketing tools are working for them. Uh, or if they're giving a, uh, a membership uh, drive and you enter who you who referred you. The reason for joining, is it networking? Is it information? Is it because you're supporting the local chamber? Do you want a ribbon cutting? Are you brand new business? Although at this time, ribbon cuttings have pretty much been rescheduled for a later date. But if you wanna do a ribbon cutting to open your business, you can ask for a specific date. And then do you wanna volunteer? Do you wanna join one of the committees? This is probably some information you can do one-on-one -on -one with the chamber director, but also you can enter this information into your profile. So how do you appear on your chamber website? You have member the membership header. This is this is what shows up at the top of your page when they go to your specific profile page. Are you uh, sponsoring something? Are you taking advantage of one of their advertising campaigns? This would be your, your member logo. Or search, if someone is searching through the Chamber website, how do you show up? Are you simply an icon of a building which is not branded at all? Or have you included your logo? It could be your uh, a general logo. It can even include a contact information. And again, here is one, one of the most important parts is adding photographs. If people come to your profile page and just see some general information, what's appealing to have them click on that information and, and proceed? Here you have a chance to add pictures that identify who you are, what you do, and show how your company operates. Is, are, are you a B2B company with basically offices? Well, there's probably some activities there you can highlight, or personnel you can highlight, other activities you can highlight. <clears throat> do you sell product and services? That definitely you can add those services. The, again, here's the, the tape to DVD or DVD transfer service that we offer. Here are clips from some of the videos that we've done. We did a restaurant, a sushi restaurant video. And here is a house painting video that we did. And again, uh, a golf course promo promotion that we videotaped or re recorded these days. There is no videotape really anymore. Unless, of course, you're transferring them to digital. So, and again, here's a profile picture that we took with one of our cameras. And you can manage your gallery by adding and add more pictures to them. So you definitely want to add pictures. And the way we do that is over here under photos. And again, you don't have to do this in order. You can jump around. You can add, you can go to photos, you can go back to categories, you can jump around using the shortcuts. And again, you can also identify your photos. Don't just put down photo one, photo two, photo three. Again, this gives you a chance to do non-branded search terms, such as video production, restaurant promotional videos, workshops, and presentations. So these are services that we offer and words that actually describe them as opposed to just going with, like I said, image one, image two, or picture three, picture four, and so on. Tape to DVD transfer, video marketing. And you can actually rearrange these. If you decide, OK, we're going to start put promoting our video marketing first, all you need to do is you type in position number one. That brings you up to, to position number one, and, and it moves everything else down. And video. As a video production company, I strongly suggest that you have a video. And you can actually post that to your YouTube channel and link it here 
to your profile. If you don't have a video, but your company has a video that, uh, that you can use, you can actually include your company's YouTube video in this section. So if you're a house painter and you're a franchise and the franchise company has a fantastic video that they spent several thousand dollars on, you can add that to your profile, uh, provided, of course, that's in your franchise agreement. And again, you do want to include the HGT portion. Otherwise, it may not work. And then, of course, save changes. And your map. Do they need to find you? Google, they have a default here for Google Maps. So if you click on Google Maps, it will automatically add it to your profile. If you don't have, if you're not on Google Maps, then you can add, upload an image as like the front of your building, something like that. And then again, you have the option to show it on your organization directory. So you don't have to have your map connected to your profile. But I strongly suggest you do because it adds to your percentage of your profile and people can find you. If you're a home-based business, you can your Google Map location can actually be a generalized area that you serve. And again, address to display on your map. So you can just click this little button up here and it pulls it from your physical address that you've entered earlier, or you can customize it here. And again, click save. And are you proud member of your Chamber of Commerce? Add it to your website. And then, and then what you do is click the button here called Generate, and it will ge generate a code that you would copy and paste into your website. So this is what it looks like here. Uh, you just basically copy this text and it should put it in location. Here it is a footer on our website. And it shows up as Blue Sky Video Productions and bold, proud member of the GLMV Chamber of Commerce. If you think that's too large and you're intercoding a little bit, you can actually resize it by changing the width to a smaller percentage. I change this to 25%. And then I also change the weight of the name Blue Sky Video Productions to from 700 to, I think it was like maybe 200, which may, uh, changes it from bold to regular text. And additional information, pro profile payments, this is where you can get it, add your credit card information and order programs and sign up for other programs on your chamber website. This is under billing. And again, here is the final page. As in the logo we, we used for our profile header, it has the logo we have for the other website. <clears throat> it has our address, has our links, which are clickable links. It has our hours, it has our about us portion. And you'll just hear these are our categories, which are searchable. Here are photos. Here's our video. It shows up media as a, as a default. So people can click on the video, watch that video. If they want to click around to about, here's our about information. You want to click on highlights. Here are the links. Again, the video production editing link, which is to our website the YouTube content marketing strategy link to our YouTube channel, the video to DVD digital transfer link to our digital transfer page on our website, our Twitter link and our Facebook link. These are this, looking over it again, are kind of re redundant because I have information under my social media. So actually I can change those to make them more relevant to something else. Maybe adding this series 
the BSVP on site series to our link so people can go either to our general YouTube channel or to our specific series playlist. Again, our contact information, here's media, which is about video and photos, our map, and on ratings and reviews. If you've got ratings and reviews on Yelp or on Google or on other services, even on your website, you can actually have people come over here and add reviews to you on your chamber profile. And again, so if you want to schedule events, you can do that. They can be real-time events. They can be virtual events. And then you can, you, once you post those, you sent those in to your Chamber of Commerce director. And so you can add an event there. It can be, uh, here are some featured events, registra registration available. And again, these are key keyword. So you can ex actually search for, people can search for the events that you're having. And you just, to add your own event, you click on add events. And if it's something like this program, we've added the inside your, your local chamber title, the hours, it starts at 10 o'clock on Tuesdays. And we actually have this recurring weekly because this, this is a weekly series. If it's a one-time event, it could you can check on one time. If it's a monthly event, it's monthly. If it's an annual event, annual. And if it's a recurring, what day of the week is it recurring on? And does it have an end time? Is this now through the end of the month, now through the end of the year, and so on? And again, added description. Add a description that people will actually look at, tune into, get them interested into. It's like writing a newspaper article or an ad. You want to add the information that will entice your viewer to actually register for the event and show up. And add graphics, not just a, a simple title, but add nice informational image that can, will show up in the profile or in the events listing page. And again, you have a choice of what, what category these are. Is it a member event? Is it an arts and, arts and culture? Is it part of school? Is it part of a holiday? Is it government related? And so on. And you have three different images you can enter, which is the header, the main event photo, and then the search results logo. And add a gallery. Do you have additional photos from last year's event? Or do you have photos that represent what you're going to be talking about or, or providing and the images can be either horizontal or they can be square and then you can change and remove them and you have up to eight images here and a video adding a video to a promo video that can where people can watch the video and get more interested in your program here I have a testimonial from Jeffrey Gittimer, the author of the Little Red Book of Selling, who during one of his programs commented on the program. So also, if you, uh, you can add, since this is a virtual event, there is no map. But if it is a physical location, you can add, add it on, on Google Maps. And so this is what it looks like when people go click on the event tab. Uh, one of our other chamber members is having a blood drive today. And here is our program. You notice here that had he maybe added an image of a blood drive using the, or something that would get people interested in clicking at it. Although he does have the more detailed information here. Again, this is the information that we sent, we we added to our content, more details, and then the category, Chamber of Commerce, Education, 
member event, and so on. And you can also, once you manage your events, you can, or once again here, click on manage events, takes you to this page, where you can manage your events. Here's some passive, passive events that we've had. And news. Do you have any news that you're willing to want, wanting to share? You can add it to this page. In addition to news, we have this additional content of hot deals, which are offering to your general community, member to member deals, news releases, job postings, and market space items if you're selling items. And it's a little bit more detail on your hot deals. These are what are currently offered. Add a hot deal, manage your hot deals, even search, search for deals. And news releases. Are they how are they related to the chamber or the community or the events or so on? Add a news release and then manage your news releases. Add a job posting and manage your job postings. And you can also add items to your market space. So that was a really quick overview of everything. And if you went through it too quickly, you can always go back and rewatch the portions that you missed. Or even better, if you just decide that you want to see a specific item, you can easily scroll through the program and click on the different links. And on YouTube, we'll actually add some hyperlinks to the different sections so that you don't have to watch the whole thing from the beginning. You can just click on the link and go directly to the part that you're looking for. So again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, definitely share it out and offer additional information to other people. Um, let me see here. There we go. Subscribe and follow us at BSPP TV. And again, subscribe to our channel, like our, our both us on Facebook. For more information, contact us at BSVP on any of the platforms. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next week.